notes are about linear functions and this is really more of a review of linear functions since you've probably seen lines before but we're just going to review them quickly. Here I have a table of values x and then its corresponding f of x. You might notice that every time we jump down in the table we're adding 2 and every time we jump down in the x values we're adding 1. Because we have a constant change in x over change in y, we can say that this table represents a function that has a constant rate of change or a constant slope. And that rate of change is for every uh, change of 2 in f of x is a change of 1 in x. So we would call that rate of change 2 over 1 or just 2. Because this function is representing something with a constant slope, we know that it is linear. That's really the deciding factor of a linear function. We have to make sure that there's a constant slope. Upon inspection, you might realize that a rule for this table might be 2 times your input plus 6. Let's just make sure that works with a couple. 2 times 1 plus 6 does give us 8. Uh, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, um, plus 6 does give us 4. So it does work um, for all of these values. And notice this 2 is actually important. That is the slope. What does that 6 represent? Well, notice if you plug in 0 to our function, that will give us the 6. And that's known as the y-intercept if we were to graph it. It's the y-coordinate when x is 0. You might recognize that form of a linear function. You sometimes see it as mx plus b. And that's known as slope-intercept form. Because we can see the slope, it's m, and we can see the y-intercept, and that's b. So if you're graphing, it's nice to have it in that form because you can plot the y-intercept and then use the slope to get other points on that line. Let's look at some examples of some lines. I'm just going to do some quick sketches. And let's see what lines with different slopes might look like. I'm not even going to put numbers on the axes here. That line has a positive slope because if we look left to right, which is how we would read graphs, I know that it's going uphill, it's pointed upwards. So I know that the line has a positive slope. An example, and again, I don't have numbers, so I don't know exactly what the equation is, but the equation might be y equals 2x plus 6. That could be the graph of uh, the line that we just looked at from the table. How about this line? When we look left to right, it's moving down. So I know that this line has a negative slope. Um, and also from this picture, I can see that there's a positive y-intercept. So this line might be y equals, I don't know, negative 2x plus 6. Could be. Again, I don't have numbers. I don't know. Just possible examples. What about this line? That line has a slope of 0. It is known as a horizontal line. The equation of that line might be y equals, I don't know, 7. I know it would have to be some positive number because it's above the x-axis. But that's the equation of, uh, that could be what that line is, y equals 7, a horizontal line, slope of 0. That line is a vertical line, and its slope is undefined. That is definitely different from having a slope of 0. Imagine walking on that line. You can't, because there, the slope does not, is, does not exist. It's undefined. Um, and that's a vertical line. The equation, though, still exists. We could call that line, I don't know, the way I've drawn it, maybe x equals negative 3 might be the equation of that vertical line because I drew it to the left of the y-axis. Let's look at how we might write the equation of a line if we're given a specific graph. So here's a line. And let's say I know that this is the point 3, 4, and this is the point... 5, 1. I know it's not really to scale here, but let's just say we want the equation of the line that goes through those two points. 
the first thing that's helpful to find is the slope. And you should remember the slope is the change in y's over the change in x. So I'm going to subtract the y's and then subtract the x coordinates in the same order. So I started with the 3, 4 point. So I started with 4 on top and the 3 on the bottom. We have to make sure we're subtracting the x's and the y's in the same order. And notice the difference of the y's is on top. Well, that's 3 over negative 2. That's our slope. Let me check. Does this line look like its slope is negative? Yeah. It's definitely heading downhill if we look left to right. So the slope of negative 3 halves makes sense here. So how do we now get the equation of the line? Well, we can use something called point-slope form, which hopefully you've heard of before. And I think this is the easiest form to write the equation of a line in if you know the slope and you know a point, because, of course, we can see the point and the slope in point-slope form. I'm going to pick the point 5, 1 to use in our point-slope form. What that would look like is y minus your y-coordinate, which is 1 in this case, equals your slope, which was negative 3 over 2, times x minus your x-coordinate. You might have heard that stated as y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where x1, y1 is a point that is on that line, and m is the slope. If you want to, I mean, this, this is a perfectly legitimate equation. If you wanted to solve for y, you could add 1 to each side. Because sometimes it's useful to have y solved for, y by itself. And if you wanted to distribute that negative 3 halves, you could simplify and make it look like mx plus b form. You could make it look like slope-intercept form. But I'm just going to leave it like this. Note we could also use function notation. Since lines are functions, we could call that f of x equals negative 3 halves x minus 5 plus 1. And in class, we're going to focus on, on using function notation as much as we can um, when we're talking about lines as well. So it's nice to get used to that. Let's just do one more example involving another form of a line that you might see. Graph 2x plus 3y equals 12. This is in standard form. Standard form um, of a line would look like ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are all integers. And notice it's not, it doesn't have the word point or slope um, or intercept or anything in that form. In this form, I can't readily see a point on that line. I can't readily see the slope or the intercept. We can find those things if we wanted, but standard form is just, it's kind of neat. It's kind of just a neat and concise form, but, we, but it's sometimes not the most helpful form because we can't see any of those important parts of the line. Well, this is just asking us to graph it. Um, so my favorite thing to do is just to start plugging in numbers if, if I'm not really sure what it looks like, and my favorite number to plug in is zero. So let's plug in zero, I don't know, for x and figure out what is the corresponding y coordinate when x is 0? Let's see. Let's solve for it. 2 times 0 plus 3y equals 12. That's just gone. 2 times 0 is 0. So y must be 4. Uh, that was our corresponding y coordinate. Let's plug in 0 for y now and figure out what's our corresponding x coordinate. 2x plus 3y, which we're using as 0 now, equals 12. Well, 3 times 0 is just 0. x must be 6. So I picked 0 because it's really the easiest number to plug in. I know things go away when we plug in 0. Here's our axes. I now want to plot those two points and connect the dots to make our line. So it's nice that we picked 0 because these are really telling us the intercepts. 0, 4 would be right here, and 6, 0 would be right here. So notice what kind of slope this line has. It has a negative slope, and we haven't found it. We haven't solved for it. If you, if you want, you can also notice that, oh, it's going down 4 and over 6. So our slope was negative 4, 6, or negative two-thirds if we reduce that fraction.
We didn't really need that for the graph because we just graphed it by finding the intercepts and connecting them. But it's nice to realize that, yep, that line does, in fact, have a negative slope. So that's just a quick review of three common forms of a line. Don't forget about function notation um, as well when you're doing this. Good luck. Mm -hmm.